If you've been thinking about upgrading your Klein Tools CL800 with the newer Klein Tools CL810, then stay tuned, friends. This video is for you. I'm gonna compare the two models, show you a few key differences between the two. I've bought both meters, so you don't have to. As far as accessories, they both come with identical accessories. They both come with a nice soft carrying case. You have your temperature probes for taking your temperature readings. Of course, your red and black probes. They both come with their instruction manual, just basic limited instruction instructions on both models and then the meter itself. All right, we've got the two meters side by side. As you can see, they're pretty much the same profile between the CL800 and the 810. They are roughly the same size. They are roughly the same weight, although the CL800 feels slightly heavier for some reason than the 810. So they may have sleeked this down just a tad. They both still have the same drop di distance of six and a half feet, roughly. They are both IP40 toughness. One big difference you can notice here is they have moved the inputs for the red and black to the top of the Klein Tool CL810, where they used to be on the bottom of the 800 right there. Now, I would guess they did that just to keep the profile a little bit shorter as you go. Uh, if you have your meter leads in the bottom here, it can add some distance to the actual length. Now, on both meters, you still have a flashlight. By holding the side button down, you can see it has a flashlight. It's the same on the CL810. They both have your hold button on the side for holding readings. You just push that one time it will throw a hold on your meter reading. Now, one huge difference in upgrade that they've done to the CL810 is they've added a better display. Now, if you look at them side by side, face down like that, it's pretty easy to see, but once you start getting to a certain angle, the CL800 kind of goes away. It's not a great angle right there, so you really have to be straight on in the CL800, whereas the 810, I find that I can read that just about on any angle. Now, in addition to that, they've added a backlight feature for the CL810, not only to the display itself, but to the dial and to the functions around it. Now, with the lights on, it's really hard to see. This dial here and functions, they're just painted on, so there's no light there. So if you're up in a dark attic, that may be an issue. Now, real quick, I'll go through all the functions of the dials. They are very similar, but they did add one function to the CL810, so let's go through them. So we do have volts AC and DC right there. Now, of course, you're gonna be using your red and black leads when you're using most of these dial functions here. We'll click up once. They both have your standard AC and DC current readings. To get between the two readings, you just hit the orange button. It cycles between your DC and your AC setting. One more click up on both. As you can see on the CL800, you have continuity, resistance, and diode. But over here on the 810, we do have an extra function on that spot right now. It is the continuity, resistance, diode, and capacitor. And I'll show you why they've done that here in just a second. One more click up. We do have frequency and duty cycle on both. No difference there. One more click up on both. And now on the CL800, we are into the capacitor mode. Now remember on the 810, they've moved it to right here to combine with those. Over on the 810, they've added in microamps DC. Now that's a really handy feature, especially for electronic technicians. You may or may not use that around your house so much, but it is another feature that they've packed into the 810 to just make it a little bit more versatile with your measurement capabilities. Now, one more click up on both meters, and we do have Fahrenheit and Celsius. This is where you would hook in your temperature probes that I showed you at the beginning of the video. To take your Fahrenheit and Celsius readings, just hit the orange button to select between Fahrenheit and Celsius. So you can take some temperature readings of components or the area that you're working in. One more click up on both meters and we're into the low impedance, low Z mode. That is for AC and DC with the orange select button. Now the low impedance is also another feature not often used by the average homeowner, but electricians and technicians do use that feature. It will give you the capability to better detect ghost voltages and induction voltages that you may be reading on a circuit. Friends, do me a huge favor. If you've made it this far in the video, throw in the comments, Klein is the best. That's it, back to the video. Okay, now that we've gone over all the dial features for both, the very similar but slight difference between the features, we'll move down to the buttons. Now, as you can see, they both have four buttons, but on the CL800, they're a little bit more basic. On the NCV button, it's all alone right there, the gray button. You'd hit that for your non-contact voltage feature, which I'll show you here on both meters in a minute. Then you have the orange select button slash zeroing out button. That's right there. And you have the range button, so you can move 
improve your range of your display by hitting that. And then you have your min max. So you can push that if you want to read a min or a max voltage or reading as you're going and it'll hold that uh, reading on your screen. Now over to the CL810, it's set up similar, but as you'll see, there's a few new features. So on the CL810, your orange button now is your select slash the NCV. So you'd have to hold that down for your NCV feature. And I'll show you that here in a second. Now on the gray button, you have your relativity, you have your zero and your backlit light button. And I just realized I didn't have it on. I just turned it on so that display got even better as you can see. And next to that, you have your range, just like on your CL800, you have your range button. So if you hit that, it'll cycle between your ranges. Nothing new there. Now folks, this is the reason right here that most people are picking up the CL810. And I will actually throw both of these meters into the description. So check each one out for yourself. But this feature right here makes it worth the few extra dollars that people are paying for the 810 in my opinion. Now, the current inrush is the ability to measure the inrush current when measuring current on a circuit. And why that's important is because while this will measure the current of a circuit, this will actually show you that that inrush of current when you first power up a component, an appliance, or a circuit. And usually most circuits will have a bigger inrush of current at the beginning when it's first firing up. It's more of a load on a component when it fires up. That's why it's pulling more current and this will actually show you what that inrush current is. So I will demonstrate that here in a second. But real quick, I want to show you the differences even between the NCV, the non-contact voltage of these two meters. So we'll start out with the CL800. Now this one, you just hold the gray NCV and right here, it's got a little indication. There's no beeping, but if you get real close to the hot side of this power strip, you can see that that red light is on, which indicates that there is voltage. If I pulled away, I lose that red light, and then I see that red light. So that's the NCV feature of the CL800. Not bad, but it doesn't have a beep. It's not real evident of a hot circuit. Now let me show you the CL800. Now this is way better. You hold it down, and you can see I'm already beeping and lit up, and I'm not even real close. As I get real close, to the hot, you can hear that beeping has sped up and the light is flashing really fast. They've greatly improved the NCV feature on this 810. Much more evident that you're near a hot circuit, no mistaking it. Okay, next I'm gonna show you the cool new inrush feature of the Kleintol CL810, and then I'll show you the difference between the CL800 and what this actually adds a value-packed feature for a few extra dollars. Okay, so we'll go ahead and flip her over into AC current. Now I've got my special extension cord plugged into my toaster here to demonstrate the inrush feature. So we'll place the clamp right Right around one lead of the extension cord only. Okay, and first I'm gonna show you just a regular current reading when we pop the toaster on. Bam, about six and a half amps. That's what I always get on my toaster. Okay, and it goes back to zero. Now that's just a regular current reading like the CL800 is gonna do, but let me turn it on to the inrush feature. Now it says inrush right there as you can see, and we are showing some dotted lines here waiting for our reading. So let's see what happens. We'll pop the toaster on and we got that 6.4. And when we let it go, we are showing an inrush of 6.4 amps. Now the toaster is not the best example maybe to show you this feature because the toaster is pretty solid on the amps that it's going to pull. But if you were to hook this up into a high load circuit like an air conditioning, when the AC first fires up, I guarantee you that this inrush feature right here is going to show you the max current that it did pull during startup. Now that's gonna be pretty much a good percentage higher than the actual running current of the AC unit. But that's just a demonstration to show you that it does have that inrush capability. And now I've got my CL800 just to show you that it does also handle current, but there is no inrush button. So if this thing were pulling like eight amps when I first fired it up, Maybe it's malfunctioning because it shouldn't, as we saw with the CL810, pull that much. But when you pop it on, you get your 6.49, roughly 6.4 to 6.5 amps, and that's it. Once you pop the toaster off, you lose your current reading. 
So you have no idea what the actual inrush, the startup current was for the toaster. Okay, folks, that's about it. They are very similar meters, as you can see. But honestly, I think for the few extra dollars that they charge for the CL810, that would be my choice if I was going to decide between buying these two meters, just because they have added in the micro amps and also that very, very useful inrush current right there. Again, on the toaster, it didn't really make much of a difference, but when you're when you're uh, testing higher amperage components such as air conditioning, maybe solar system stuff like that, that inrush will be a lifesaver because you can see if when you're firing up your AC or anything like that, if it's pulling way too many amps, you've got an issue. You may have to install a hard start unit or something like that. So again, for the money, my choice is the CL810. If you want to save a few dollars, the CL800 is still feature packed. It's still a great clamp on ammeter. It really will get the job done. But if you really want to go all out, get that inrush feature and the micro amps, my money's on the CL810. Friends, as you can see, both of these meters are really, really similar and they're both great models. I think if you end up owning either one of these, you're going to be very pleased. And friends, if you enjoyed this comparison video, watch this one right here. I think you're gonna love it. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel right there. It does something to the algorithm. I don't know what, but it helps the video go out and helps so many more people. I truly appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one.